Welcome everyone to the next installment in this uh, series on recovery issues. Uh, today's episode is called Stress and Recovery. And we're glad to have you join us, whether you're joining us on YouTube video or on the podcast, welcome to you. As uh, we do always, we like to begin by focusing our attention uh, and spending just a few moments in stillness and quiet so that we can be focused, that we can uh, relax a bit and become open uh, to hearing the Holy Spirit working in us. Uh, so we'll begin now by clearing out <coughs> fears and stresses and distractions and all the noise of the world. I will let all of that slip away in a few moments of stillness and quiet, and then we'll have the opening prayer. Pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit, we call upon you now to join us in a special way this hour. We ask for your wisdom and healing. Encourage and inspire us with clear thinking, understanding, and truth, and fill us with deep and satisfying fire of your love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, if you're watching on video, I want you to know that the audio only portion of this presentation is on podcast. Uh, the podcast is called Encounter with Dr. Ken, in case you search for it. Uh, you can find it on uh, these platforms, Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, or Spotify. And if you're listening on a podcast, you can find the content that includes uh, PowerPoint slides if you like visual things on the Grazia Plena YouTube channel. You can find it by searching Grazia Plena and Dr. Ken. Uh, we're, and we're happy to have you search up the old episodes as well. Uh, last time we talked about avenues of recovery. Um, because all humans are created, fallen, and redeemed, you could say that we're all in recovery, every one of us. Uh, recovery is not just for a few people that are entering, you know, AA or therapy, uh, but you could say that all of us have some work to do on becoming better people, right? Uh, so we have that kind of philosophy in these uh, recovery episodes. Um, my point last time was to suggest that there are really many pathways to recovery, not just one. Uh, everybody has an approach that works for them. If you search and find it, each person's story and journey, they're unique. Uh, in fact, every person's recovery really makes a great story. Uh, the 12 step approach is often what many people think of when they talk about recovery. Uh, the 12 step approach is almost 100 years old. Now it's time tested. Uh, it's effective for many people. Uh, it's a very spiritual program of recovery and consistent with our Catholic teachings and our Catholic faith. It's one reason that I uh, like to recommend that it. it works for many people if they will embrace it and be open to it also has a very strong social component social support uh, is really powerful uh, part of the transformation that occurs through that particular recovery approach um, regardless of whatever approach we take um, we should persist in our recovery if if one path doesn't work for us we should try something else we should not lose heart we should not lose hope we should not give up we should press on and keep working uh, to get the recovery that we need with God's help. Although there are many avenues, the common ingredients that I see uh, when recovery is working um, is the person is uh, open to grace and experiencing grace in the recovery work, um, that the person is engaged in action or activity across time uh, in support of their recovery, um, and that the person uh, finds help uh, through other people, that they're not just going it alone. 
Uh, those are the common ingredients in recovery, regardless of the different avenues that you may take. So today's topic is stress and recovery, stress and recovery. Um, if you're living in the COVID world, which we are uh, dealing with the COVID pandemic, uh, you're probably under stress. Probably the whole world is under stress because of the COVID pandemic. Um, but let's define stress. So stress is the situation of being faced with more demands than we have resources to meet them, to address them. Uh, resources like time, there's only 24 hours in a day. Resources like energy, you know, I get tired because I'm working and going to school at the same time and managing kids, all this stuff. Uh, money, you know, money can be a stress. Uh, patience, I only have so much patience, right? And so I get stressed um, and ener uh, energy I already said. So I got energy in there twice. Um, so stress is the situation being faced with more demands on me than I have resources, uh, internal and external resources to help meet those. Uh, I want to distinguish stress and pressure. Uh, pressure is the situation when we perceive that something of value is at stake that depends on our performance. Uh, so pressure is different from stress. Many of us have stresses and pressures. Let's take some examples to clarify. Um, during the COVID pandemic, uh, we experienced stress because we uh, we may not have the freedom to do what we want to do. Um, so we feel stressed because we can't just go shopping like we used to do. Uh, we we can't uh, we experience stress because we can't go worship like we used to worship. Um, in contrast, an example of pressure is if I'm taking a test and I need to get a high grade to pass the class and stay in school, then I have pressure. So a, a lot of times we kind of confuse stress and pressure. They're a little bit different. Uh, we'll talk about both of those uh, today. Nearly all of us have some stress and pressure in our lives. Uh, I, I can't think of too many of us that don't. Um, maybe a small uh, infant or, or toddler, but even, even they have some stresses and pressures because they're dependent on uh, the caregiver for helping change their diaper, for feeding them. So if, if the uh, infant doesn't get fed uh, in a timely manner, then they may have some stress about that. Uh, so we're all under stress and pressure. Uh, sometimes it helps us to figure out if the issue that we're struggling with is stress or pressure because we might address them in two different ways uh, based on which one it is that we're uh, dealing with. All right, so let's think about stress and pressure and recovery. Um, if we're working on recovery, uh, we have a goal in focus. So if I'm working on recovering from depression, uh, you know, I want my depression to be to be lifted for it to go away. I'm working for those symptoms to go away. Uh, same with anxiety. If I'm working on uh, some addiction to some drug, including alcohol, then I I want to stop using those things. And that's my, the focus of my recovery is is to get healthy again. Uh, if I'm if I'm recovering from a surgery, then I want I want my wounds to heal. I want my function to get back to the normal or to a better place, and that's my recovery. So there's a full, there's always a goal or focus in mind when we've got a uh, a recovery situation that we're fo we're involved with. Um, being in recovery has its own kind of uh, stress just in itself, its own stresses and pressures just being in recovery because we're making changes, we're doing something difficult, something new. Um, and so there's a certain internal or interior stress and pressure in the process of recovery. For example, um, if I'm used to medicating um, my anger, you know, if I feel angry and I'm always used to medicating my anger by going off and smoking pot, um, then if I'm learning to live without pot, then that means I'm, ha I'm having to figure out how to manage my anger without that medication of the pot. Um, and so that, that presents kind of a stress. Um, if I'm going to individual counseling or group meetings, it can be stressful to do that recovery work, to talk and share, to look at myself. Um, and I might feel some pressure from the actions that I need to take. So I go to the 12 step meeting and they say, you know, you need to make amends uh, late, later, later in recovery that, you know, they say it's time to make amends to the people that you've harmed. And so that puts some 
some stress and pressure on me uh, to have to do that. Uh, for example, so um, being in recovery can be stressful. So if it's stressful, if we have pressure just by being in recovery, um, why would we want to do that then? I mean, m many of us live as at the point is to avoid stress and pressure. Um, but we, we engage in recovery because recovery is eventually going to help us learn to cope in healthier ways without the old negative consequences. So if I learn to manage my anger without smoking pot, then I'm being uh, healthy in those ways. I don't have the consequences of, of worrying about trying to work when I'm high or drive a car when I'm high or get arrested or things like that. Those kind of negative consequences that can come uh, through smoking pot. So I'm learning how to cope in a healthier way, which is really a good thing. Um, but there's also stresses and pressures that come when we're engaged in our recovery. They come from outside of us. Uh, they're kind of external uh, stresses and pressures, maybe just the normal ones of life, maybe other ones, extra ones. Uh, but these can threaten our progress. They can they can jeopardize and maybe set us back sometimes. And so it's important for us to address uh, these stresses and pressures that are part of what's happening while we're in recovery. Uh, for example, the environment around us may be tempting. We might be short on sleep, emotional strength. We might be isolated from others. So our environment uh, may stress us, what's happening around us, outside of us. Um, our spouse or parents might threaten us that if we use some drug or pornography or something again, if we don't um, get to work, if, if we don't uh, get out of bed, not be depressed, then we're getting kicked out of the house. So we have that pressure uh, that's on us um, to make these changes that can be part of the external pressure of being in recovery. Uh, COVID is an external stress on recovery because uh, this whole disaster situation is really so overwhelming for us. It causes us to make so many changes, changes in how we go to school, work, and so forth, how we shop, all kind of changes um, are part of this COVID situation. That's from the outside. That's an external stressor, um, and that can even jeopardize your recovery uh, when we're doing well or make it difficult for us to get on track. Um, if we're having health problems or financial problems from COVID, we're feeling the pressure of it um, and the distress of, of uh, these things is a challenge to the positive changes that we're trying to sustain in recovery. So this is why we, we look at these issues of stress and pressure in recovery. Um, so what do we do? You know, it's, it's always OK to talk about what's happening, but what do we do? Let's get to the point. How do, how do we how do we manage better? How, what can we do? Um, I, I tell everybody that's uh, dealing with stress, that's that's in recovery. Be sure you get good sleep, nutrition, and exercise. Uh, we really have an epidemic of sleep problems in the United States right now. So many people not having good sleep for all kinds of different reasons. Uh, technology sometimes uh, can be part of our sleep problems. Um, not getting enough exercise can be part of our sleep problems. Anxiety, depression, addictions can interfere with sleep. Um, so getting good sleep, good nutrition and exercise, uh, these are really helpful for us in our manage management of stress. It's part of getting healthy. It's something that self-care that we all need to attend to. You don't have to do fancy exercise like CrossFit or big gym exercises. Heck, just going out for a walk, going for a bicycle ride, that can be good exercise in itself. Um, staying away from fast food would be a huge improvement on your nutrition. Um, trying to eat uh, during the day instead of skipping meals helps with nutrition. Um, our brain and our body respond well when we have good nutrition. Um, so sleep, nutrition, exercise can't underestimate the power of just those things. Uh, for supporting our recovery, for helping us manage stress. Daily prayer and meditation are, are important for our connection with God uh, and for spiritual purposes, but daily prayer and meditation are also very good for our mental uh, health and for managing stress and coping with life. 
um, what, what can you do in terms of daily prayer and meditation? Uh, simply getting out the Bible, reading the scripture uh, can be very helpful for our daily prayer and meditation. Uh, God speaks to us through his word, which is the scriptures. Uh, if, if, if people sometimes complain and they say, well, I don't hear God telling me anything, read the scriptures. God will tell you things in the scriptures as you read them. Um, that is his word. God is not silent. He speaks to us through his word. Um, there's other devotionals that we can read, uh, great books, um, spiritual uh, information devotionals, such as The Imitation of Christ, Thomas at Kempis, powerful, excellent book, uh, classic, um, or other recovery reading uh, topics like The Way of Serenity by Jonathan Morris, a uh, really good little book uh, by J Jonathan Morris, uh, recovery reading. There's plenty of good books out there on, on both devotionals and recovery readings. This can be part of uh, helping us manage stress is to spend a little time regularly on these kind of studies. Um, relaxation. So um, psychologists are uh, frequently helping people learn to relax, to deal with anxiety, stress, addictions, and so forth. Um, just simply focusing on your breathing, breathing um, in and out, paying attention to your breath, your breath as it's going in and out, slowing your breathing down, just focusing, meditating with your breathing uh, can be a simple, effective way of, of relaxing our bodies. When we start to control our breathing, our brain and our body responds to that uh, using signals that say, okay, it's time to calm down. Um, I really love uh, hand warming exercises. I learned hand warming when I was working on my master's degree. A uh, psychologist taught it to me as part of my studies and also my, for my personal growth. Um, hand warming is, is to meditate and imagine uh, the blood flowing down your arms and into your hands and to imagine and meditate on the blood flowing down your legs and into your feet. Um, when, we, when we're super stressed, the blood doesn't circulate to the extremities of our body. Um, the, the blood stay, tends to stay more in the core. And sometimes when we're super stressed or anxious, um, we even get to the point where our hands and our feet might feel cold or they may even tingle because they're not getting good blood circulation. Um, uh, but we can reverse that neurological process by slowing down, intentionally uh, warming the hands and feet. There's some instruction that's involved with that. Um, but you can actually uh, put uh, temperature sensors, uh, little thermometers on the hands and the feet. On the, on the fingers and the toes to see that, that uh, through mental control, you're actually able to warm your hands and feet. It's quite an amazing thing. It's part of relaxation. You can learn how to do this. Um, we can um, tense and release different muscle groups in our bodies as part of our relaxation exercises. It brings, uh, brings uh, a, a response into the body of feeling peaceful and relaxed. Um, we can say chants to ourselves as we're sitting still and quiet, sometimes in adoration. We can do a mental chant, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner, just repeating that. Um, Jesus, I trust in you, just repeating that phrase mentally to yourself, gently. Um, and visual uh, imagery in relaxation, imagining I'm at the beach. Uh, the white sand, the water on my feet, uh, hearing the, the sound of the waves, uh, the seagulls at the beach, uh, having a visual meditation, uh, controlling my breathing is, is a part of relaxation. One of the battles that we face with relaxation is that our mind can drift, um, and simply through training, we just continue to bring it back over and over again when our mind drifts, which is bring gently back our focus to our breathing, our hand warming, or our muscle tensing, relaxing, our chant, our visual, uh, our visual imagery, whatever it is, we just continue to bring our focus back. And with practice, we get better and better at the relaxation that can uh, uh, greatly help us in our body and our, our stress. Um, another, another part uh, that's of, of prayer and meditation can be um, contemplation is being still and quiet. Um, the rosary is a contemplative prayer, very uh, has a rhythm to it. Uh, 
is, is, is great for meditating on uh, aspects of the Gospels and uh, also helps us connect with God in a beautiful way uh, to the life of Jesus and also can be very peaceful and relaxing to us. Um, Lexio Divina is a particular method of contemplative prayer using the scriptures where we're reflecting on uh, the scripture passage in a deep way and, and what meaning it might have for us. Uh, these are prayers of contemplation that are very good for us. Um, the, the mass, going to mass or praying the liturgy of the hours prayers, which focus around the Psalms. Uh, these are two of the highest forms of prayer and they can be done daily several times. Liturgy hours can, can be done several times during the day. Uh, these are old, old traditions of prayer and meditation, connecting with God, but also bringing peace into our lives. Um, and then one, another aspect of stress, because stress may be uh, feeling overwhelmed by what's going on, not having enough resources to cope. Um, part of managing stress might be sometimes that we seek more resources. So the, uh, the, the mother that's struggling with postpartum depression, she's trying to take care of the children by herself. Maybe she calls in babysitters or family members to help her. She gathers more resources so that she can manage stress and her recovery better. So we can have social help uh, to support us in, in bringing more resources. Um, we can try simplifying our life so we don't have so much going on so that uh, the resources that we have are, are more uh, effectively managed because we don't have so much. Uh, these, are, these are ways of seeking more, more resources or decreasing the need for resources so that we better manage stress. What about pressure? So for pressure, we can try these types of things. Um, with pressure, we might re-examine what's at stake, what is, what is uh, the thing that's on the line for us, and uh, reconsider the importance. You know, am I blowing this thing up bigger than it needs to be? Um, if it doesn't go the way I hope, um, is it really the, the disaster that I'm afraid of? Um, so we can challenge our thinking around what's at stake and the importance of it. Sometimes that helps us um, manage the pressure. Um, with pressure, we, we also might focus on the target, what it is that we're trying to work on and avoid multitasking. Our culture that we live in is a multitasking culture. And many people think that the more things I can do at the same time, uh, the better person I am, you know, that I'm, I'm the winner if I can juggle five things. Uh, and it's so not true. Um, really, multitasking is the enemy of our inner peace. Multitasking creates more stress and pressure. And so by avoiding multitasking, by doing one thing at a time, focusing on the thing that's in front of us, uh, it helps to reduce stress and especially pressure. Um, when we're focused on a particular task that we have some pressure on, we might consider breaking the task into ma more manageable steps instead of just looking at it as one big uh, hurdle to overcome. And so we might break the task into steps by planning, uh, getting out the paper and, and breaking it down and organizing it and scheduling it, giving ourselves some deadlines uh, so that we can attack that, uh, that issue, whatever is the pressure. Um, we might also, in order to manage pressure, th pressure, think more positively about our abilities, be more confident in ourselves, and to think positively about the outcome, to not assume the worst, to expect something good's going to happen. Uh, we don't want to have this negativity about how we do and the outcome. We don't want to have it become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So we want to think positively about our abilities and the outcome. You know, if I'm if I'm a playing baseball and I'm trying to hit that ball that the pitcher is going to pitch to me. If I'm telling myself I'll never hit it, I'll never hit it, I'll never hit it, I'm going to strike out. What do you think is going to happen? So we want to think positively. We want to be confident, reasonably confident uh, and, and expect a good outcome that can uh, relieve some of the pressure that we face. Um, we want to persist. So if we don't have a good outcome, we're feeling the pressure. We want to keep trying. We don't want to give up. We don't want to fall into despair and or do better next time. And then we have a good uh, attitude in that way that helps us reduce the pressure. Uh, a few final uh, concluding points. Um, Self-medication for stress and pressure works only temporarily. 
Um, so, you know, that person that I was talking about before that might use uh, pot to help medicate their anxiety or medicate their uh, anger, um, it only lasts as long as the pot lasts. And when the pot goes away, uh, another day comes, you know, two weeks from now comes, they have a situation of stress or pressure or anxiety, anger again, then suddenly they need the pot again because they, they didn't deal with the, uh, the basic issues. So the self-medication only works temporarily. It's important for us to, to admit that. Um, we want to learn and practice tolerating stress. So this is developing uh, the ability to cope with stress by um, being tougher, by being stronger, um, by working on overcoming. Um, and, and so we realize, okay, well, uh, a little stress isn't going to kill me. I can handle it. I, I can manage it. We develop some confidence around that. Uh, we might experiment with different, different strategies for stress and pressure and find out what works best for you, different ways of coping. Um, this, you know, if we're, if we're going to manage stress and pressure without self-medication, then that means we're trying something new. We're trying something different. We have to be open to uh, the, the possibility that the very first thing we try might not work. Maybe it does work great, um, but we'll be open to the possibility that we may try something different, see if it works better until we find what works for us. Um, one of the, the spiritual aspects of managing stress and recovery uh, is to think of this beautiful image that we have in the Gospels, uh, Matthew chapter 8, Mark chapter 4, Luke chapter 8, uh, of Jesus calming the waters. Uh, the disciples are in the, in the boat on the lake. They're very stressed by the storm. You know, imagine your life as a storm, whatever is the storm. Uh, and the disciples say, Jesus can, you know, help us. We're, you know, we're going to drown here. Um, and Jesus calms the waters because they ask him to. Uh, and, he, and he demonstrates that he can be at peace uh, for them in the midst of the storm, that the storm doesn't bother him. And so we connect with, with uh, God's strength in order to have the waters calmed. And we have to ask him, we need to ask him to help us manage the stress uh, go go reflect on those um, gospel passages of the beautiful account of, of Jesus calming the storm, Matthew 8, Luke 8, Mark chapter 4. Um, and this idea of the self-medication, you know, is not, it's not working. We have to keep coming back to the thing that we, uh, that we need if, if we're doing it that way. Um, reminds me of the beautiful passage of Jesus encountering the woman at the well and they're they're talking about water because she's there to get water out of the well and and she she says you know i have to keep coming back getting this water sounds very much like you know the alcoholic that has to keep coming back to drinking or the person using pornography that has to keep coming back to pornography to manage their stress and pressure um is is like the woman that has to keep coming back to fill her bucket from the well and Jesus says, you know, I can give you the water that will truly satisfy you. I can give you the help that will allow you to break free from needing to keep coming back uh, for the water. And, and the image can very much apply to our recovery, uh, that by seeking a deep relationship with Christ, um, that he can, he can satisfy us. He can bring us the true peace that we need in our lives, regardless of what's going on around us. Um, and that that's very healthy and good for us, uh, for our mental health and our spiritual health. Um, you can read about the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Um, so that's the little presentation today, some thoughts on stress and pressure as it applies to recovery. Um, stre uh, managing stress and pressure are, are one of the aspects that's really quite important in, in uh, recovery. Um, almost every program or approach uh, helps people deal with that because uh, stress and pressure can be a, a danger to ongoing recovery success. Um, on the Grazia Plana website, uh, graziaplanacounseling.org, um, we have a list of resources that you can uh, take a look at, resources for COVID, uh, resources for um, uh, addictions, resources, especially for chastity issues. We have a big section on that. 
Um, if you're looking on your YouTube video, you'll see the QR code. You can shoot it with your camera and go to it uh, right from the video. Um, each time we close with the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel, so let's do that now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, the next time we get together, next episode, we're going to talk about activity and passivity and recovery. That'll be the topic. Um, we welcome your sharing these videos or podcasts with your friends, letting them know about it in case that may, they might benefit from it as well. Um, if you subscribe to the podcast or the uh, YouTube channel, uh, then I think it lets you know when the new episode is out so that you don't miss it. And then uh, those old episodes are stored. You can go back and look at the old episodes anytime. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have uh, this brief commercial advertisement. Grazia Plena is a 501c3 faith-based nonprofit charity. Uh, we offer mostly uh, mental and spiritual health services. We also do presentations in the community. Uh, we assist organizations in the community uh, with our, our counselors and our spiritual directors. Um, and we do this without too much concern about how much money we're going to make. Um, all nonprofits usually have a very tight budget, and we do too. Uh, we survive on fees that we that we get from counseling and spiritual direction and uh, and and from the uh, presentations that we might make in the community. Um, but we especially survive on donations. We wouldn't be alive. Grazia Plena wouldn't exist today if it weren't for the the kind donations of people in the community the support of found private foundations and parishes um, and so the final uh, part of this presentation is just to mention that we welcome uh, any donations that you might like to give um, you can go to our website graziaplanacounseling.org at the top there's a blue banner that that uh, has a, a, a donate donate button and that takes you to the payments donation page where you can put your credit card in or you can shoot uh, this video uh, has the QR code, you can jump to the page uh, by shooting it with your camera phone. Uh, so that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation uh, that you may reflect and do some thinking on it. And uh, we'll catch up with you uh, hopefully next week. God willing, uh, be safe, be healthy out there. Take care. Bye now.